our task is to say to as many people as will listen, there is a God, God loves you, God wants to be a part of your life. And so that's the challenge. And I would be looking for someone who has that, that vision and that energy to say, this is what I want to do with this pontificate. I think the real priority in the conclave is to choose the Pope who's going to deal with these great global issues. The, the Pope who's going to bring, continue to bring our focus, the focus of the Catholic Church at every level, parishes, dioceses, institutions all over the globe, to deal with inviting people once again back into an appreciation of the transcendent, an appreciation of God in life. That's going to be the goal. If there are some internal problems in the Vatican, administrative problems in the Vatican, that'll eventually be dealt with. But it certainly isn't going to condition how I'm going to be looking at who's going to guide and lead the church in, in the next years. What do we as a church focus on moving into the future? This is the, this is the evangelizing quality of the church today. Some of these internal issues, you know, it's like when you become bishop of a diocese. Many times you find out uh, there are there's some things that need to be straightened out. You can appoint someone to do that and then get on with the work of the church. I think we can, we're going to find that this conclave is probably going to be open to a pope from just about anywhere. It's no longer now uh, the hegemony of Europe. What is asked of a pope? Uh, today, he has to be present every day, all the time. He's always on, and that takes a toll. So I wonder if the church isn't better served by simply knowing we can choose the best person we think to be pope, and then if at a certain point he feels, I can't do this anymore, then he's free to, to step aside, just like Pope Benedict did. I think it's a very liberating thought uh, that we are free to, uh, to face this reality, this possibility. Thank you.